there's a film that is made now, looking at the 60s, about Hollywood's vision of what Rome was then. So um, whatever you do, of course, it always comes of its time, of, of now. And action! They're like a bloody jackal pack. It all starts with that vision and um, how you work with people and with talented people and give them give them creative freedom but also being able to align it with your vision. That's that's quite a challenge, I think. That's great. Really like that. In fact, I met the actress who played Elizabeth Taylor two years ago. And fortuitously, she'd played Elizabeth Taylor before. I think it's the lazy guide to directing because Rodri Miles has played Richard Burton, so he, he brought so much. Just like this all the time. You get the hair done, you get the makeup done, you have the whole costume, and then you think, oh, okay, you know, this is great, but you know, I'm not really Elizabeth Taylor, you know, I'm just dressing up. And then, and then you actually get onto set, and it all changes, because there's so much detail, and all it does is help us as actors, you know, get really into the, the feeling and the characters. I mean, it was, it was an amazing opportunity, because she's a complete icon to me. And it wasn't really like asking me to do work, it was just asking me to kind of continue my, my hobby. In the kind of run up to, to, to doing the film, I was uh, saying, well, I'm going to work with Liz Taylor next week. And, uh, and most people were jealous, uh, not just my girlfriend. I'm fortunate possibly to have a, a lower timbre to my voice, which is like baritone. I mean, Richard Burton smoked about 60 cigarettes a day and about two balls of vodka a day, so his voice was always going to be really low anyway. We, did, we don't have many <laughs> people who went, to, went to, to Hollywood and made it big from a small village, uh, not unlike the village where I'm from. And uh, for someone, a miner's son, one of 13 children, to kind of uh, make it so big in, uh, in the film world was uh, such an attraction for someone who uh, being brought up in Wales. Sophia is this random girl <laughs> that delivers a package to um, Elizabeth Taylor on a, uh, on a set of Cleopatra that is, I think they're filming it for 10 months already and she just arrives. And it's just, yeah, she's just, she's just a normal girl from 60s Italy that gets drawn into a massive production just by chance, you know. Every single set was so perfectly done and so gorgeous. Just being there, you know, just made it all happen to everybody, not only me, everybody. What I like about Josephine is she has a vision and she has a really, really good way to explaining that vision. From one idea in her head, she's created all of this. The making of one of the biggest films ever made. Just from one little idea. <laughs> like Josephine surrounded herself by really talented and creative people, so. And obviously we're filming on an amazing camera. You know, which is another reason what drew me to the film, actually. I initially started with how authentic I could get the visual look, the recreating the look. And action! We had a lot of elements of modern filmmaking meeting okay. filmmaking from the 60s. We had hot studio lights, traditional studio lights, 40s, 50s, lenses. We used the lenses Woody Allen used in Midnight in Paris. I had, you know, um, fantastic romantic ideas about the nostalgic look and, and so did Tyna and she brought that beautifully and she suggested shooting at 6x4 at 60s frame. And it was 35mm too. It's all got to go from the can into this so it can go through camera. So 
you have to load everything in the dark, which is why I've got this tent. And then that's the finished product again, back in the can, nice and safe. You know, having people drive down to London with the rushes and hiring fridges and things kind of felt like the real purest filmmaking. I think that kind of gave it some added character and challenge. <laughs> we watched the making of, <laughs> ironically, <laughs> of the actual Cleopatra film and the people who, or the set designers who were building these immense, enormous sets actually did a sign like this, which was quite funny because obviously we're on time limits and budget limits for building it, so I quite like that. So we've used that in this as well. The music is being written, composed by a composer called Sarah Llewellyn, who has um, a wonderful energy and talent. And I needed someone who understood the biblical Roman Hollywood um, traditional score, sort of Alex North score of Cleopatra Spartacus, in a mini epic way. Here we are in Macedonia recording the music, a year after Sarah and I met. It was a very interesting creative challenge to give a sense of the epic with the format of a short film telling intimate stories of a few characters. I really needed to work with somebody who could bring the quality of that to the film, for the films of the 60s Chinichita, the Hollywood epics. And finally we came up with a complete score that both of us were happy with and that we really were excited to then actually put in front of the live musicians, which again then transforms and lifts the music like nothing else can. section, I have a brass section, woodwind and percussion, piano, harp, celesta. But I also had to combine some other instruments to give the Italian 60s flavour. So I've chosen to include drum kit and electric bass and accordion, which gives this, this a really unique sound palette. The music creates a character of a film and she's been brilliant at bringing the main, the character of the film to life, especially the, the role of the story, the, the uh, Sophia's story. Sophia's theme is the strongest theme in the whole um, score and it recurs because we're seeing the world through her eyes really. The film is a love letter to film and Sarah's written music which is a love letter to film music. I think that's come over really well. I'm not terribly interested in kind of uh, realist film. It's not my kind of style and uh, I wanted to do something that was more imaginative um, and playful and perhaps has, I'd like to think mystical. I'm interested in the atmospheric quality and going back in time and just capturing moments um, and I'm interested in those details about things um, among people. And uh, it was much more involved, it was much more of a narrative, there were more characters um, than anything I've done before in film. Um, and that's been very interesting and has made me think more about pursuing that and pursuing developing maybe ideas, feature ideas. And I've, I've been very much from an artist's background and stuck on the idea that I work with the visual, but I'd be really interested to explore the idea of traditional filmmaking and, and exploring that and taking that further and trying to learn more about that um, and see what happens. See what happens. Mm -hmm.